This is Larry Moore. I'd like to. This is Larry Moore. I'd like to welcome you to our 15th and final uh, presentation of the Biological Wastewater Treatment Training Series that we've done for the Department of Energy. And today we'll be looking at another case study using uh, my BioTiger model in the Department of Energy measure suite of packages. So uh, let's get right into it here. Last time we looked at a military-based wastewater treatment plant that was designed to be a conventional plant. And today we're going to be looking at a municipal wastewater treatment plant that uh, is designed uh, as an extended aeration activated sludge process. Uh, preliminary treatment consists of screening and uh, grit removal. You come out of grit removal and go into two aeration tanks, uh, then into two circular secondary clarifiers. Uh, then we go into chlorine disinfection and then finally into post aeration. And then the effluent is pumped uh, a ways to get to a, a relatively large receiving stream so that the uh, city could get uh, essentially secondary effluent treatment standards. But each of the two aeration basins has six 75 horsepower high speed surface aerators. And they also, each aeration basin has two 40 horsepower mixers as well to uh, provide supplemental mixing in the process. Our plant uh, was designed for 4.5 million gallons per day at a medium strength municipal wastewater, CBOD of 200, Spinosolis 200, TKN 35 milligrams per liter. And so we're basically medium strength uh, municipal wastewater is what it's designed for. And our effluent limits year round are CBOD five of 25 milligram per liter, Spinosolids solids 30 and ammonia nitrogen 10 milligrams per liter. Again, these are monthly average values and uh, again, pretty close to secondary treatment standards. Uh, so these are very reasonable effluent limits and the plant uh, consistently meets the limits and uh, we wanna analyze and see if we can save them some energy and continue to consistently meet the NPDES effluent limits. So again, designed for 4.5 MGD, they're receiving about 1.5 MGD, which they distribute to uh, each of two aeration basins. So the plant's receiving a hydraulic loading of about one third of what it was designed for. We have two large aeration basins, each is 3.4 million gallons and plants designed for 200 milligram per liter BOD, they're only getting about 150 milligrams per liter uh, BOD. So the plant is operating probably at about uh, somewhere around 25% or so uh, of actual design loading in terms of, of BOD. Suspended solids, uh, 200 milligrams per liter and Again, this is an extended aeration activated sludge process, which means it's designed for about, in this case, a little over 24 hour hydraulic detention time and uh, an SRT in the range 20 to 40 days. And again, we're going to be uh, uh, well beyond that on the uh, SRT. Uh, Okay, as far as aeration again, our existing conditions, uh, we got uh, 12 high-speed mechanical aerators, six in each basin. They're each 75 horsepower. So our total aeration horsepower is 900 horsepower and 450 horsepower in each reactor. They're running an MLSS of 3,000 and MLVSS of about 2,000 milligrams per liter. So this is actual operating data we got a hold of about 24 months of operating data to get uh, the MLS and MLVSS. These are average values. And we're going to we're going to analyze this plant under summer conditions because uh, that's when their uh, uh, oxygen requirements will be the greatest. Here's an aerial view of this treatment plant. Again, the raw wastewater comes in right here. 
uh, goes through uh, screens and then a couple of aerated grit chambers. And then here, one aeration basin, a second aeration basin operated in parallel. And then the flow come into a splitter box. So half the flow hopefully goes to one clarifier and the other half goes to the other clarifier, comes out of the clarifiers, goes through the chlorine contact basin, uh, then a post aeration basin and then an effluent pumping station that pumps it uh, to a river um, some distance away. And again, that allows them to get the uh, more generous uh, discharge standards. And they have three aerobic digesters for the sludge. Uh, in this particular application, this particular project, I did not analyze the aerobic digesters. We focused on the uh, activated sludge process. And by the way, you can see I'm not sure exactly which ones are aerators and which ones are mixers, but six aerators and two mixers in each basin. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have, again, six 75 horsepower aerators in each basin and uh, two 40 horsepower mixers in each basin. Okay, in this particular case, uh, they operate the 1275 horsepower aerators. They operate each of them about six hours a day each. Now, when we get into measure, the way the model is set up, it, it basically requires you to run your aeration equipment 16 hours a day. So we can easily make an adjustment here. Again, we got aerators, there are typically two aerators running at any time uh, during the day in each of the aeration basins. And again, they alternate which one's running. As I say they got six aer aerators in each basin, typically two are running at any given time. So the equivalent aeration, if we were running those aerators 16 hours a day, uh, it'd be the equivalent of 340 horsepower of aeration running uh, 16 hours a day. So that's how we're going to analyze it in measure. And again, that's uh, certainly the equivalent aeration. The point I want to make is, again, some of the aerators are running at all times, so there is no anoxic zone. And uh, as in case study number one that we did previously, we want to try to create an anoxic zone by turning off the aerators uh, a few hours each day to take advantage of the nitrates going out in the effluent, save them some energy. Again, activated sludge effluents got about eight milligram per liter suspended solids. Return activated sludge flow rate, uh, almost two MGD, which is pretty high. Uh, WAS flow rate, um, 0.024 MGD. RAS TSS concentration, about 5,500 milligrams per liter. And one reason that RAS TSS is only 5,500, uh, again, we've got a pretty high RAS rate so we're pulling those solids out of the secondary clarifiers uh, fairly quickly. Uh, and uh, that contributes to the fact that our RAS TSS is only about 5,500 milligrams per liter. And again, we're fully aerobic. So there's zero hours per day of anoxic time under current operating conditions. This particular plant, <clears throat> an average for the whole year, uh, is about 213,000 kilowatt hours per month. So if you take 213,000 kilowatt hours per month, divide that by 30 to get kilowatt hours per day and divide it by 1.5 MGD, this plant is using about 4,700 kilowatt hours per million gallons of wastewater treated. For a typical extended aeration plant, the energy use we would expect to be about 2,700 kilowatt hours per million gallons treated. So we're using about 74% more energy than an average plant of this type. So we should have excellent opportunity for energy savings at this uh, municipal wastewater treatment plant. The oxygen supplied by our aerators uh, at the DO in the aeration basin, which I think is around four, four and a half milligrams per liter, which again is too high. That, reduces the efficiency of our aeration equipment. So we're supplying 4,200 pounds per day of oxygen. 
which is about what the biomass need. And uh, I mentioned before, again, that the aeration system is basically self-equilibrating. If we're supplying more oxygen than we need, that extra oxygen is just going to drive the DO up to some equilibrium point of, uh, that reduces the efficiency of the aeration equipment. So that basically, the aeration equipment is only going to supply the amount of oxygen the biomass uh, is using. The mixing intensity in the aeration tanks with 340 horsepower of equivalent aeration uh, for uh, 24 hours a day, uh, no, excuse me, for 16 hours a day. But again, some of the aeration equipment is working at all times, but 340 horsepower for 16 hours a day. Uh, and then we have our 440 horsepower mixers. So if you take 170 horsepower in each basin and, and 80 horsepower mixing in each basin, then it comes out to be about 74 horsepower per million gallons of mixing intensity, which is plenty. Uh, sometimes we'll shoot for 100 horsepower per million gallons, but I've generally found that if we're providing at least 50 horsepower per million gallons of mixing intensity, that is usually is adequate to keep the biomass in suspension. The DO uh, in the aeration basin is about 4.6 milligram per liter, again, much too high. And what that does is that reduces the field transfer rate of these aerators uh, to 0.76 pounds per horsepower hour. So they're operating very inefficiently because again, we're supplying more air than we need and it's driving the DO up to almost five milligrams per liter. So we need to cut back on aeration and maybe do some other things at this particular plant. Effluent quality, as you can see, is excellent. <clears throat> CBOD about three, uh, spinous solids eight, ammonia nitrogen typically 0.05. And again, we're going to analyze this plant for summer conditions and the mixed liquor temperature in the uh, heat of summer, which is about um, August, will be about 28 degrees C. The nitrate's going out in the effluents about 10 milligrams per liter. I was a little bit surprised at that, as we'll see later in the model. The model predicts more nitrates going out in the effluent. So a uh, little bit unsure how they were able to get the nitrates down to 10 milligrams per liter because again, they had the aerators running, uh, at least two running at all times. It could be that they were able to develop some anoxic zone pockets in the aeration basin uh, with, with only two aerators running at a given time. So that could be what's happening. The TKN concentration, they have about one. So the total nitrogen according to the plant data was about 11 milligrams per liter, but we do have some nitrates to work with uh, in, the, uh, in, in the process. All right, our first energy conservation measure, uh, we're going to, uh, again, we got way too much aeration volume. Uh, they're designed for four and a half MGD, they're operating one and a half, so we only need to operate with one aeration basin. And uh, so we're gonna cut the aeration volume from 6.8 million gallons to 3.4 million gallons by going from two aeration basins to one in service. Uh, the influent loadings will stay the same and we're going to only run the aerators uh, six hour, excuse me, 18 hours a day. In other words, they'll be off for six hours a day. <clears throat> Again, what they're doing now, you know, we have the aerators running 16 hours a day and it's 340 equivalent horsepower Again, some of the aerators are always operating, so there's not a, at least a full anoxic period in the uh, two aeration basins under current conditions. But by turning all the aerators off for six hours a day, we're gonna make sure that we get good anoxic conditions. And then the second thing we're going to look at is, uh, um, we're going to, uh, reduce the mixed liquor suspended solids concentration to 2,100 milligrams per liter. Again, right now they're operating at about 3,000. So, uh, and again, at 3,000, their SRT is too long and I wanna drop it to 2,100 to get the SRT down to a more reasonable number and uh, see if we can't uh, uh, improve the performance of this treatment plant. So now let's uh, look at, uh, 
our measure. So let's pull up our DOE measure website. And we're going to scroll down. We're going to create a wastewater assessment using BioTiger. In this new assessment, we're going to call municipal, uh, let's capitalize that. Uh, bear with me, this one, I'm a terrible typist, municipal wastewater prima plant. And uh, let's put add assessment. Okay, so it takes us right into the model. Again, we'll be using US uh, dollars. And uh, uh, let's go with uh, Let's also go with 200 days. I can't remember if they were over 100 days or not, but just to be safe, let's go with 200 days on our SRT. Uh, click off the disclaimer, we'll go to next. And now we're gonna enter the current operating conditions for existing conditions. So we wanna analyze at summer conditions, which is 28 degrees C. Our influent VOD is 150 milligrams per liter. Currently, they're using 6.8 million gallons of aeration volume. And the flow rate coming in the plant is 1.5 MGD. Now, the inert VSS, again, coming into this, normally, again, at 200 milligram per liter, I'd use 40 and 20 on inert, 40 for inert VSS would be my suggested value. Here, I decided to use 50 to get a little better match with our solids production. The um, oxidizable nitrogen coming in in the wastewater, I believe, was uh, what, 45 milligrams per liter, I believe. No, 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 excuse me, it was 30 milligrams per liter. 30 milligrams per liter. VSS to TS ratio, again, almost always use 0.85. Influent TSS was. 200 and on the inert and organic TS again at 200 would recommend usually 20. Again, I went a little higher on this one. You can make adjustments uh, you, as, as you talk to the and look at the review their operating data and this plant was generating a, a little more solids than I thought they were generating as far as their solids production from activated sludge. And so to uh, I calibrated and, and came up with these values as the appropriate uh, values to use for inert VSS and inert inorganic TSS. Effluent TSS again was about eight milligrams per liter. The RAS TSS concentration for this plant, they told me it was 5,500 milligrams per liter. Again, they're operating using MLSS and they're trying to maintain about 3,000 milligrams per liter of MLSS in the uh, aeration process. We're going to use our standard uh, biokinetic constants and let's look at aerator performance. All right, we think they're operating maybe at about 4.5 on DO. Again, I use, usually use 0.84 for alpha, 0.92 for beta. Here they're using surface high speed aerators and the standard oxygen transfer rate's about 2.7 pounds per horsepower hour for standard conditions. Operating horsepower, again, the equivalent, the way they're operating the aerators, the equivalent is 340 horsepower operating 16 hours a day. But again, they're alternating the aerators and some are operating uh, at all times. And the side elevation is uh, about 200 feet. So we got mechanical aerator here where we specified surface high speed aerator, then that told the model we have mechanical aerators. So uh, that's good. And we're running them at 100% speed. Uh, and they're paying about 10 cents a kilowatt hour, at least when I was there uh, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, they were paying 10 cents a kilowatt hour overall charge for their electricity. Again, that includes demand charge, environmental fee, administrative fee, taxes, fire factor penalty, everything. The overall cost of about 10 cents a kilowatt hour at that time. And again, there was no full anoxic zone in the process. 
All right, so let's look for assessment. And we got our base conditions in. Let's say out of modified. Uh, so in our alternate scenario, again, we're going to operate with one aeration basin. And we're also going to use reduced aeration. So let's just call it one aeration basin for right now. And we just created our alternate scenario. So again, we're looking at summer conditions. Now, as I've said before, listen carefully. The aeration equipment, if you're operating at a DO concentration of about two milligrams per liter, the aeration equipment is only going to be about 5% less efficient in the summer than it is the winter. Now, in this case, we're operating at a DO of four and a half milligrams per liter. Uh, the summertime aeration uh, operator, excuse me, aerator oxygen transfer rate is going to be uh, significantly less. But at any rate, we're going to oper operate at uh, 20 degree, 28 degrees C, uh, summer conditions. Our loadings are the same, but we're going to cut our volume in half. We're going to go from two basins to one aeration basin. So we're going 6.8 to 3.4 million gallons. And again, if you look at their solid retention time, operating two aeration basins and at 3000 MLSS, they're operating at an SRT of 143 days, which is way too much. So we, that's uh, by going to one aeration basin, we should at least cut that in half. Uh, flow rate's the same. Again, these numbers are all the same. And uh, we'll look at an alternate MLSS later. But right now, let's stay with the 3,000. Let's stick with our recommended biokinetic constants. And let's uh, look at our air rate of performance. So again, baseline conditions are here. Uh, we'll, we'll leave DO at four and a half right now. And we'll let the model calculate that for us later. Uh, again, surface high speed. Uh, okay, we're going to cut the aeration down from 340 horsepower for 16 hours a day. We're going to cut it back to the equivalent of 150 horsepower, but we're going to run that 150 horsepower 18 hours a day. And, and so we'll have six hours a day where the aeration equipment, all of it will be off. And we'll run the 240 horsepower mixers when the air is turned off to give us some uh, mixing uh, during the anoxic period. But again, even though they're running 16 hours a day at existing conditions, as I said, that's equivalent. They're operating some of the aerators throughout the day. There's no time during the day when no aerators are running. So again, they may have pockets of anoxic zones, but uh, for the most part, the basin is aerobic. But in our alternate scenario, one aeration basin, we're going to turn all the aerators off for six hours a day to take advantage of the nitrates in the effluent, denitrify, and, uh, and allow us to save some energy on the runtime of the aeration equipment. We'll run them at 100% speed. And now by turning all of the aerators off for six hours a day, we're going to answer this question, yes. Now we have created a dedicated anoxic zone for six hours a day by turning the, all the aerators off for that period of time. So let's go look at our data here. Uh, well, one thing you notice, we have just reduced our aeration energy use about 50% by going from 340 horsepower 16 hours a day to 150 horsepower for 18 hours a day. Now let's look at where we are, okay? Um, O2 requirements under existing conditions, 4,134 pounds per day. We're supplying 4,320. So supplying more than we need. So the actual DO is probably, let's try 4.8 again. Let's see what that number goes to. 38.32, I cut it too much. Let's go back to 4.7 on DO. Take a look at these numbers. Uh, still not enough. So let's, let's go back maybe. 4.6, and we're right on the money, 41.34, 41.57. So it changes slightly. So they're operating about 4.6 DO under current conditions. Uh, and that, again, substantially reduces the 
uh, oxygen transfer efficiency of the aeration equipment and we'll, or oxygen transfer rate. So we'll look at that in a moment. All right, so again, right now we've reduced the aeration horsepower. We left the DO high. So with that high DO, it says we're only supplying 2,144 pounds a day of oxygen. And with the nitrification, we've reduced the oxygen requirements from 4,100 pounds a day to about 3,400 pounds a day. So we've got a, we're going to operate at a lower DO to get that oxygen production, production up. So let's go up here, click Optimize DO. And so now we're going to be operating at a DO concentration of 2.9 milligrams per liter. And now the oxygen supplied is almost exactly what the oxygen need, uh, needs of the biomass are uh, with a six hour um, anoxic period. And the model assumes again, we're, we're going to get about 70% uh, denitrification efficiency. All right, so again, we're saving about 50% on energy. What does that translate into? Let's look at it. Uh, the aerator energy cost savings uh, right now, $127,000 a year by operating the way we changed with uh, going to one basin and cutting back on aeration equipment. Uh, now our energy cost per year is $63,000. So the cost savings was about $64,000 per year. Now, once the plant did this and we had uh, about a year or two of operating data at the new conditions, uh, they confirmed to us that they were actually saving about $70,000 a year on their energy costs. So they may, may have made some additional changes. But at any rate, you see the, the great benefit of going to one aeration basin, cutting back on the amount of aeration we need, and, uh, and also, uh, again, creating the anoxic zone by, again, having all the aerators off for six hours a day. So we're looking at 50% energy savings now. Another thing we could do here, and, and again, I didn't push them to do it, but uh, um, the sludge age went from, or SRT, solid retention time, from 143 days down to 68 days. 68 days is still too long. So again, we didn't push them to do this. As I said in, in my previous presentation with the military plant, again, I didn't want to push my luck. I didn't want to just swamp them with ideas. I just wanted them to start step one. And again, I, I was not able to make a second visit to this plant, but what we can do, we can go back because they're operating again We've done much better. We've gone from 143 day SRT down to 68 by going from two to one aeration basin. But 68 is still too high. So what I'm gonna do, let's suggest that we uh, operate at 2000 milligrams per liter, 2000 milligram per liter uh, MLSS with one aeration basin. And now, We've reduced the SRT down to 43 days. And that probably reduced our oxygen requirements uh, just a little bit. Um, I think they were about 30, 3,400 before. Now they're about 3,361. So they dropped a little bit. So in essence, what we've done by reducing, again, if we make this 3,000 where they are now, Again, the SRT is 68 days and uh, at MLSS at 3,000. So by dropping it to 2,000 MLSS, now we're down from 68 to 43 days, which is better. And, uh, and, and we should get actually better performance and, and getting closer to that 20 to 40 day recommended SRT for an extended aeration activated sludge process. But let's, let's look at analysis and look at some of our operating curves. The green curve here, this is MLSS concentration in milligrams per liter versus SRT in days. And again, initially we're operating at about 140, 140 a day uh, SRT, 
a mixed liquor uh, solids uh, were about 3,000. And then when we went to one aeration basin uh, and we dropped back to 2,100 MLSS, again, that got us back to an operating uh, SRT of, again, somewhere around 44, uh, 45 days, I believe. So we have uh, gotten down to a more reasonable range. Again, 150 days, the sludge is just much too old. Now, how does that impact what they're doing? Let's take a look at it. As far as total solids production, again, we got one curve here operating at where they were initially. They were generating about 1,200 pounds a day of solids production. That's total solid production. That's your waste activated sludge plus the solids going out in the effluent. By operating at about a 45, 46 day sludge age, now we've gotten, uh, we've increased the, the, uh, solid production to about 1300 uh, pounds per day. So we've uh, actually increased the solid production about, uh, I think we increased it about, yeah, about, about 10%. So we've increased solid production about 10%. Let's look at oxygen requirements again by going from a SRT of about 140 days down to about a 45 day SRT. You can see we haven't reduced the oxygen requirements very much, just a little bit. And uh, so, uh, but, but we have reduced some some. So again, when you operate at a lower SRT, you're gonna channel more of the incoming VOD into solids production. So we're gonna produce more waste solids, but you slightly reduce the oxygen requirements. So we're channeling less BOD into the energy uh, reaction, more into the synthesis reaction. And again, we're gonna produce slightly more solids and we'll reduce our oxygen requirement slightly. In terms of effluent total CBOD5, where they are now, again, it's about, what? This is soluble. No, this total effluent CBOD5, about two milligrams per liter, and it doesn't change much by going to a 45 day uh, or SRT. So effluent quality is, is really better because BOD and solids is about the same. Ammonia may go up a little bit, but the nitrates, uh, um, I believe their nitrates went from about 10 or 11 down to about uh, five milligrams per liter after making these changes. And another thing we want to look at is uh, report. Again, this shows you uh, all the operating conditions uh, effluent quality and, and aerator energy use baseline. And again, if we operate one aeration basin, MLSS of uh, around 2000 instead of 3000, again, we get our SRT uh, solid retention time went from 143 days down to 43 days, which is much better. Again, our Total solid production gone from 1,200 to about 1,300 uh, pounds per day. And our oxygen requirements have declined slightly. Uh, well, considering denitrification, they've uh, declined a lot. We've gone from 4,100, again, down to, again, uh, about 3,400, a little less than 3,400 pounds. Again, that reduction is primarily by creating the anoxic zone, okay? So we reduced ox oxygen requirements by instituting the anoxic zone. And so we need less oxygen because of that. And uh, so, and we run our aeration equipment a lot less. And you see the difference when operating at a DO of 4.6, the field transfer rate of the aeration equipment was only 0.76 pounds per horsepower hour. And then operating, I think we got the DO down to uh, 2.9 milligrams per liter, uh, way we're operating our aerators. And, uh, and then going back to report and operating at 2.9 DO, now we've increased the efficiency of our, our oxygen transfer rate of our aeration equipment from 0.76 to 1.27. So by operating under new conditions, we have increased the 
oxygen transfer rate of our aeration equipment about 67%. So as I've illustrated before, talked about before, operating at a high DO uh, is simply wasting oxygen, reducing the oxygen transfer rate of the aeration equipment. And, uh, and again, we increased the oxygen transfer rate of the aeration equipment uh, about 67% by now operating at a DO of 2.9 versus where they're operating now at 4.6. And we did that again by going to one aeration basin using less than half the amount of aeration equipment that they were using now. Uh, and then equivalent operating time, 16 hours a day for the 340 horsepower, 150 horsepower, 18 hours. So again, we've achieved about 50% reduction in energy requirements so again, the estimated uh, energy savings in our aeration equipment, about $64,000 a year. And again, the plant uh, had documented energy savings of about $70,000 a year after they implemented all of these changes. So there again, another case study of how we use BioTiger to save energy and, and try to optimize the TREMA plant I won't say we have it fully optimized, but we have it operating much better than it was initially. Uh, initially, again, way too much aeration volume, way too much aeration energy. And uh, so we saw that problem, saved them about 70,000 a year, according to their data. And the plant's still producing excellent effluent quality. And we have dramatically, we've cut the amount of nitrates uh, going to the receiving stream by at least half. So we've also improved the environment uh, in the receiving stream as well. So hopefully, again, that gives you another idea of how we can use uh, BioTiger to analyze a treatment plant, save energy, save money, uh, keep effluent quality still good, improve the environment. And uh, so we have, a, 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 again, a very positive impact of the changes that we have made. And again, you might say, uh, you know, is less better in this case and in the previous case study, less aeration equipment or less aeration volume and less aeration equipment in operation um, uh, allows us to save energy and improve the performance of the plant. And at the same time, uh, again, make the plant be much more efficient uh, than it was initially. So in both these cases, uh, the military plant and the municipal plant, excellent uh, results. So thank you, appreciate you listening. Again, this is our final presentation. Uh, again, as you, if you do these energy assessments and try to understand activated sludge, I encourage you to go back and look at these 15 uh, presentations. Uh, we take you all the way through from wastewater uh, quality all the way through to the use of BioTiger and Measure. And we try to bring you along and explain activated sludge, and hopefully in a way you can understand and uh, hope you have great success as you uh, use the model and go out and try to help plants operate more efficiently. So thank you. Have a great day. I appreciate your uh, attention.